Um, I'll just move into road hierarchy now and just talk a bit about, um, I guess, how it's evolved over the last few years before we then go into a bit of a case study. Um, so I guess road hierarchy, putting it into a bit of context, they might come up a question of um, why, why have road hierarchy? And that comes down to then a question of why, why would we do planning? So I think we can all um, appreciate that transport is a very complex system um, used by all members of the community. So any decisions on projects are quite significant and they can have um, the ability to really impact a lot of people. Um, so when deciding on um, roads or projects that are going ahead, we really need to consider what their purpose is. Um, there's high, high costs associated with these projects and they can also have major impacts on the success and experience um, of people within our cities. Um, so I guess, broadly speaking, the hierarchy really helps us to align any planning decisions that we have um, against policies that consider a number of different factors around um, transport as well as land use planning and also give a basis for the decision of that on who the responsible authority might be, what the management will be and where the funding might come from. Um, so now just moving in a bit more into road hierarchy, I guess we've just touched on transport planning is a relatively new discipline within civil engineering. Um, and as noted before, it's, it's predominantly about people and their movement. And so therefore, it also ends up um, taking into consideration people's attitudes, their expectations and the behaviour, which is continually evolving. Um, and as such, we've also had to evolve with it. Um, so there's a number of challenges that we're facing at the moment and will continue to face in this field. Um, and they're around the mass urban migration. Um, there's definitely an increase in the focus on wellness of community members. Um, there's an aging society. So we need to consider how we'll react to that and still provide um, the levels of movement that we need. Um, there's a lot more technology and a focus on um, a digital era there. So that has a real impact on what the projects are and where we go from there. Um, and then there's also outside or sustainable things, environmental impacts around climate change and what some of those impacts might be. Um, so thinking through those, um, the approach to how we plan roads and what their function are um, has really had to try and evolve as well with that, um, that space. Um, so just going on to the next slide then, I guess, is um, we can think of a road or a street in, in two ways really. So the first way is as a movement conduit. So the purpose is really to try and, try and get people um, different modes of transport from A to B. And that, that is probably um, in the past been primarily a feature of what a road street is. Um, Whereas there's also um, the consideration of outside of those transport conduits or the, the roadways, there's also what's on the outside of the street. So um, streets can be a place in their own destination, a destination in their own right, sorry. So that they'll have their own things that draw people there and then not just necessarily um, a way for people to access um, from A to B. Um, so I'm uh, just going to go through now, I guess, how some of the, the approach to the road hierarchy system and um, how it's applied to traffic planning um, and how it's evolved over the last few years. So this slide here, you can see that there's, there's a very, very wide expanse of um, road space for vehicular movements. So you can see there's lots of trucks, there's cars there. Um, so this was predominantly the model that was kind of used around the 70s and 80s um, and it's very focused on um, providing uh, consistent and good vehicle speeds, making sure that all movement by vehicles was very efficient. Um, it was about making sure that the road capacity for traffic was very high, um, so really making sure you get that throughput there. Um, and also there, there was some consideration of balancing some of the requirements for access and stuff, um, but probably more of a focus just around making sure you're getting people there. Um, from that, there's been then a bit of a switch um, to more of like a smart roads framework, which was around between sort of 2005 and 2015. And that, that came in, you can see from this um, slide here, um, there was a bit more of a focus on um, the people and the activities on the street. So you can see there's um, now bus stops um, and facilities for um, all 
all people to use, so um, aging, DDA users, that kind of thing. Um, there's also quite a high impact on public transport. So you can see there's a tram corridor um, down the middle there and cycle lanes. So it's shifting the focus away from purely being a way to get vehicles moving and more about sharing that across different modes with that. So um, a bit more thinking about what the different priorities might be of that street and where it's going. Um, since then, we've now moved into more of a movement and place type outcome. Um, and this is, this is still evolving and it's continuing to evolve, but it's based predominantly on um, some of the models that were developed within the UK. Um, so if we look at this, we can identify quickly what some of the key differences are. Um, so you can see that there, there's a lot more density on the, on the sides of the road. So in the public area, you can see there's a lot more things happening. Um, there's activation on the footpaths along there. Um, the, the road space itself for vehicles has reduced. So the amenity has been placed more on the people using it and the activities are going on and less about just getting vehicles through. Um, you can see cycle lanes and not just a small provision of some width, but actually something that's usable space that really makes it that people want to use it. And so therefore it's a different mix of people um, ranging in ages um, uh, and really promotes um, both male and female um, using a lot of those things. Um, there's a lot more focus on making sure that there's passive surveillance and activation in those areas. Um, and you can see that the things like buses are now using the same space as the vehicles. So any vehicles just need to share that space. Um, I guess it's, this isn't saying that every street should look like this now, um, but it's just, you, it's just to highlight the shift that's happened um, in these spaces and the way that the roadways are used.